the previous uh, recording, we talked about how to calculate determinants, just a good old hard way, or the way to calculate a determinant. Uh, there's also properties of determinants that can make calculating determinants easier. Uh, I had eight properties, and I I let the students put these on a formula sheet when I gave them exams. I don't expect them to memorize all eight. When I get to it, it's good if you memorize this eight. Well, let's go through them. First one is, it doesn't matter if you're talking about A or it's transpose, they have the same determinant. Remember, determinants only apply to square matrices. The determinant of a product is the product of the determinants. If any two rows or columns, actually almost anything I say about a row would apply to columns because of this first property. But if any two rows are equal, then the determinant is zero. If any row or column is all zeros, the determinant is also zero. By the way, if you put those two, uh, I guess I'll get to it in a second. Um, if any two are equal, zero. Any, any one is all zeros, zero. Then we get into the row operations. Remember there were three row operations. One is you could multiply a row um, by a scalar. Now we can talk about columns. But if you multiply any row or column by a scalar k, the determinant is k times the original determinant. That's just one row. Let's look at the implications of that down here. What if you multiply the whole determinant of the whole matrix by a scalar? Then it's like multiplying each of its rows by that same scalar. So you would need to multiply, if it's n by n, you need to multiply by n scalars. Say so you had, say a was four by four, you knew that its determinant was five. What's the determinant of three times a transpose? First, the transpose doesn't matter. And then if it's three, well, I'm multiplying each row by three, and there's four rows. So I need to multiply by three, four times, or four times the original determinant. And I need a calculator for that, but the answer is 405. In general, you could write this as sort of your ninth rule. It, it's the result of uh, rule five. But if you multiply the whole determinant by K, and it's an N by N determinant, a to the n times the determinant of the original matrix. Okay, that got us to five. Well, now we can talk about combining properties three and five. Any two rows are equal? And if I multiply any one row by a scalar, so think about it. That means if any two rows or columns are simply scalar multiples of each other, then the determinant is also zero. Call that the tenth rule, but it's derived from these eight. Um, get to an example of that in a minute. Um, let's see, six. If I just interchange any two rows or columns, it's negative. I just flip the sign of the answer. And if I do this row or column operation of multiplying one row and adding it to another row, the determinant is unchanged. Um, and here's a good one you want to know. If you're trying, if your matrix is triangular, the determinant is just the product of the main diagonals, main diagonal elements. Let's do a few examples. Here's a matrix. Oh, it's triangular. It's a lower triangular. I don't care about all these numbers down here. 
the answer is just one times two times three times two or 12. What if it's this? It's not triangular, but if I just switch rows one and three, the result is triangular. Let's see. Um, It will become this matrix. So the diagonal elements after switching rows one and three will be one, two, three, two. I switch rows. To change rows, I need to switch this time. So the answer would be minus 12 instead of just 12. Think about it. You could always do Gaussian elimination. Well, I won't say that as a general rule, but you can get it into maybe triangular form. Um, that or you'll get all zeros. Uh, if you keep track of all your row operations to know what they did, you know, using properties. Some other examples. Let's say somebody gave us this matrix and they told us the determinant is just a number five. They say, okay, find the determinant of this matrix. Well, let's look here. This matrix versus that matrix. All we did was switch rows or columns one and three. The three on the left and one on the right. We just switched columns. That is a sign change. So the answer would be minus five. about this guy. How could we have got from this matrix to that matrix? By two operations. One would be multiply the first column by two. And then from that result, multiply the second row by three. You see that? Two times that column, that's the result. This. And then from this reason, multiply this middle row by three. That'll be a six, that'll be three, three. Like multiply by two, then I multiply by three. So it's six times this original five, which is this, which is three. Um, yeah. Each operation is its own thing. You'll get like an intermediate matrix, but if you can keep that in your head, you don't have to write all that. You can just see, well, I had to multiply one column by two and a row by three. And I could have done it either or. I could have multiplied this row by three and then that column by two. Still end up with this matrix. Um, and that's how that stuff's done. But this guy, find its determinant. Now well, let's think of it. What if I just subtract column one from columns two and three? So A, B, and C. And then one, one, one. These two columns are just scalar multiples of each other. So it's going to be a zero. If you wanted to prove that to yourself, um, I could multiply this little column by two. Right, I got to divide by two, but there I have two columns that are the same, so it's just. But if, if once you know that if any two columns are just scalar multiples of each other, the determinant is um, this guy. These things are tiny brain teasers. But if I add second row to the third row, you get X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z along the bottom. And then one of two things happen. Either X plus Y plus Z is zero. In, case, in that case, I have a row of all zeros, so the answer is zero. Or it's just a scalar multiple of this first. In either case, the 
answer is zero. So those are some examples of how to how to use properties of these.